This is question one of the 2020 uh, mechanics exam. Right, question one. Uh, Alex and Joe have decided to take a road trip. They start from rest on a straight road and accelerate at four meter, 4.2 meters per second. Show that their velocity after 0.6 seconds is 2.5 meters per second. So first, what you should do is you should write down um, A equals 4.2. So write down what you have. Um, velocity initial equals zero. Velocity final, that's what we're trying to find. So we'll just put question mark, even though they give it to us, we're just doing a proof question. Um, and time is equal to 0 0.6 seconds. Um, I, mean, I probably didn't put the units for that. So the only formula, or well, you got four values. The only formula that has all those four values is VF equals VI plus AT bigger. Um, and then all we need to do now is substitute in. Um, so we're going to have that is equal to 0 plus 2.5 times 0 0.6. Um, and that does in fact equal four point. Ah, uh, wait, hold on. No, f the acceleration is four point two. Whoops, four point two, and that equals two point five meters per second negative one. There we go. That's all you need to do. Um, right. Next question. While waiting at traffic lights, Joe has to put the handbrake to stop a car from rolling down the steep 10 degrees slope they are on. 10 degrees isn't that steep at all. Um, the mass of the car and the occupants is 1600 kilograms. Um, diagram above shows a frictional force acting between the tyres and the road, um, pointing up the hill, stopping it from sliding down the hill. Add labelled arrows to show the other forces acting on the stationary car. Okay, this has been plagiarised from the 2015 exam. When I first saw this question last year, I was thinking, oh, this seems familiar. And I looked it up and it's literally pretty much the same question. Um, so if you did the 2015 exam as practice, you would have smashed this question. But I mean, it's no help to people watching this video because this is in the past. Well, this, this paper's already been done. So we're going to have the normal force, which is going to point straight up. I mean, I can sort of see if you come in a little bit, you can, oh, you probably can't see, but on the video, or on the piece of paper, the arrow stops there. So that is where you join your normal force arrow from. Um, but, yeah, and re yeah, I should really join it from there, but I mean, uh, too much tells me you put it in the center of mass. So, well, not too much, but um, what do you call it? Habit. Good feng shui. You should always do it from the center of mass. So this is the F uh, N, and we'll just put equals normal force. Normal force. Normally I'd have a key off to the side, but it's fine. And this is going to be gravity straight down. And this we'll just call this uh, FG. FG. And then maybe over here I'll put FG equals gravitational force. Gravitational. That's such a large word. And uh, force. There we go. Um, and there's a right angle between the normal force and the friction force because uh, normal force is literally just meant perpendicular to the surface um, right add labels arrows show the forces acting on the stationary car we've done that what's the next thing um, complete a labeled vector diagram showing how all three forces act together so what we should really do is they don't give us much space but we should do it sequentially um, the order doesn't matter just like 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals what's 8, 9, 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9. Um, if you do that sum in reverse, it still equals 9. So we're going to have the normal force pointing up like so. There's going to be Fn. Oh no, what I'm talking about. Scribble that up. Normal force pointing off to the side a little bit. What am I doing? Here we go. Hope we can see that in the camera. Fn. And then we're going to have plus and we'll have Fg. Uh, do we want to do Fg? No, we'll do the friction force first. Oh, I might have stuffed myself and might not be able to fit. Just make that kind of small. Even though it's not that small. FR plus, and they're going to have FG going downwards. This is probably going to look like a wonky triangle. Maybe, maybe not. So first we're going to go... Oof. I suppose the order doesn't really matter. Um, I'll do an order that I've sequentially done it. So I'm going to go first. Uh, I'm going to go up the what do they call it up the normal force and i'm going to have f n then i'm going to have a right angle triangle and it's not going to be too too large and then we have to 
What I'll do is I'll do a dotted line. So this is where you gotta be clever. So just ever so slightly dotted line. Okay, that looks a bit wonky, but that doesn't matter. Um, this is gonna look way smaller than it should because the gravitational force is gonna to have to be straight down. So it has to sort of meet up. Um, I should have really put this normal force off to the side a little bit, but I mean, it gets the gist. And then this is gonna be the friction force. If, uh, and this is gonna to have to be the gravitational force, what is gravitational force, uh, F, G. There we go. And it looks a little bit different in the answer schedule, um, but it's just because of the order that I added my vectors. Um, they still add to zero because I started here and I ended here. So if I start here and I end here, it still adds to zero. Um, if I did it backwards, so if I went F, G, so if I went down, across, and up, I would actually look exactly what the answers have, but I mean, I'm trying to see, like show you the process and not the, how it's like the answers work. Um, right, by first working out the force on the gravitation, uh, the force of gravity on the car, show that the value of the friction force required to keep the car stationary is 2,700 newtons. Um, so what we should really do is we'll just draw that diagram, uh, draw that triangle, but this time we're just gonna shunt it a little bit. So we're gonna have, up here, uh, we're gonna have that, so gonna be our friction force, this is gonna be our normal force, and the hypotenuse is gonna be our gravitational force, and I'm not really gonna put the arrows in, I'm just gonna draw a triangle, and then we'll label them, this is FG, this is FN, this is FR, and then I can, uh, it should look like an N, this is 10 degrees. Um, right, so we'll quickly just find out the force of gravity, Fg equals mass times gravity, or mg. Um, over the page, it says the mass is 1,600 kilograms. So we're gonna have 1,600 times 9.8, um, and that is, I'll quickly do that. Oh, 1,600 times 9.8, and that equals 15,680 newtons. Hold up. Oh yeah, it's 15680 newtons because this is the force of gravity. Um, and now we're, we need to show that this FR at the top, that's why it looks funny because I was missing a dash. This FR, we need to show that this FR is 2700. So we have the hypotenuse and we're trying to show the opposite. So we're going to use, we've got an O and an H. And if you remember from Sokotoa, we're going to use sine. So then we're going to write sine... Uh, theta is equal to the opposite of the, over the hypotenuse, and we're trying to show that the opposite, which is FR, which is a friction, is equal to 2700. So we're going to move H over. So we're going to have the opposite is equal to sine or H times sine theta. Um, and then we're going to sub in the values. So FR is equal to uh, 1500 and 680 sine um, 10 degrees. And that, if we do that in our calculator, oh no, I turned mine off. Um, quickly do it. What have we got? 15680, oh, 15680 uh, sine 10. 15, okay, 15, 6, one five six eighty, ah, six eighty sine ten. There we go, two thousand seven hundred twenty-two point eight uh, newtons. So then we have FR is equal to two thousand seven hundred newtons. There we go. Um, probably some people are thinking, how do I know that this down here was ten degrees as opposed to this up here? Um, it's because. Generally speaking, well, you can sort of just ballpark it and look at the diagram and be like, well, that's definitely going to be 10 degrees and that's going to be the co-interior, so that's going to be 80 degrees. Um, you can draw some funny lines and sort of prove it to yourself. Um, if you do a parallel line, how can you do it? Yeah, what's the easiest way to, yeah, nah. I'll just... The easiest way for like for you to remember, other than asking your teacher, because it takes a bit of an explanation. Um, I think I've done it in other videos, but I've forgotten how to do it straight off the top of my head um, quickly. It's just the smaller angle is always 10 degrees. So it's always gonna be the one 
down the bottom. Right, while, uh, we got? while traveling at 50, uh, 50 kilometers an hour, Jo sees a pothole on the road 15 meters ahead. She must reduce her speed from 50 to 20 k's an hour to avoid damaging her car. If the time needed for safe braking from 50 to 20 k's is 2.3 seconds, show by calculating, calculation whether there's enough time to complete the braking before reaching the pothole. You should start by showing that 50 kilometers per hour is 13.8 meters per second. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna go 50,000 meters um, divided by, and then, cause it's kilometer, like 50, like kilometers per hour. So then there's, we're just gonna turn this into seconds. So it's 60 seconds times 60, um, and that is gonna be equal to 13.88 meters per second. So 13.88 meters, uh, oh, eight, nine meters per second. There we go. Right. We should really do the same for 20 kilometers an hour, so we'll go do the same again. 20,000 divided by 60 times 60, and when you do this in your calculator, you'll need to put brackets, and we get 5.55, or 5.56 meters per second. Right, now what we need to do is figure out the distance that the car has traveled, because that's probably gonna help us. So we're gonna have, uh, we have the initial velocity, we have the final velocity. So this is equal to VI, this is equal to VF. Do we have the acceleration? No, we don't. Um, what else have we got? Oh, we've got the time though. Time is equal to 2.3. We're trying to find the distance equals question mark. Um, and the only formula that has all of those things um, in it is the D, D equals VF minus VI uh, over T. And this is just your regular velocity formula, but it's got, this essentially finds the average velocity, um, and that is equal to 13.89 over, oh, whoops, minus 5.56 divided by 2.3, and that equals, take it back, I made a mistake. This should be two divided by two because it's the average times time, because distance equals velocity times time, and it's the average velocity average velocity between the two, so it should be plus, um, and then it's gonna be times, this is just gonna be divided by two times 2.3. This is what happens when I do things on the fly without bothering to read what I've written. And that equals 22, 22.36 meters. If you wonder how I do these videos, normally I redo, I do the exam first, just so I can find any like, I don't know, mistakes or whether I can do it or not. Normally I can. Um, but when I'm translating, talking as I do it, I tend to jumble myself up. So 22.6, that's way more than 15. So 22.36 meters is bigger than 15. Thus, um, there is not enough time. Wait, whether there is enough time. There is not enough time. Not enough. Tom.